Yowza! How's everyone doing? What's going on? My name is Chi Sling. I'm doing my thing. And of course, I hope you are too today. Oh, we got something crazy. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy day. Isn't it a crazy day? I think it's kind of a crazy day because we're going to rock and roll with some edge players here and go over my top edge rushers. This is a really, really interesting class. It's one that's full of a lot of potential, just like last year. But let's go ahead without further ado and dive right into it. And number one, I think this is going to be no surprise or I think it's a pretty easy one here, and it's going to be KT, Kavalon, Thibodeau from Oregon. Oh, man. Ah, Oregon used to be my favorite team in college until they went too crazy with the jerseys, man. Go back to the old jerseys. I love them, but that's a quick little side rant. Going on to the man, Kavalon Thibodeau. This dude is an absolute monster. You see the glowing green eyes. He's the new Hulk this year, I guess, if you wanted to put it that way, but those green glowing eyes, man, they're about to explode on you, but if he gets a full year in, I'm telling you, this guy is undisputed. I think he's going to be a top five pick. Right, you look at the speed. You look at the size, the athletic frame. What is he? Six foot five, 250 plus, right? He even comes in over that. That was might even be a little bit light there. I think he's like 258 lifted or something of that nature. With that being said, the size, the frame, the length, everything you look for, the bend is there. He is a, he's got all the tools to be a top five level player. Is he on the level of Chase Young? Is he on the level of Joey Bosa or Nick Bosa or, you know, anyone, you know, like that, you know, Miles Garrett or one of those guys? Maybe not yet. We'll have to wait and see if he can elevate there, but I think he's right a tier below those guys, and that's no disrespect to the man, Kavalon Thibodeau, with the green eyes. I think he is going to be an absolute monster this year. I think he's the unanimous number one here, and he should be an absolute animal for whoever gets him, which hopefully will be the New York Jets, which, okay, there's a little bit of bias there, but let's go ahead and go right into number two, which might be a little bit of a surpriser to some people here, but Adam Anderson, and yeah, he only has like a, like a 200 snaps to his, his college career at Georgia, but those snaps are insane. You go back to watch this dude and he is an explosive mother you know what I'm talking about a mudger fudger I don't know what we mother folgers I don't know I'd like to make up random names for curse words but with that being said you can use your imagination on what this man is Adam Anderson not Pamela Anderson maybe they're related I don't think they are but with that being said Adam Anderson is a beast he is got this freaking, it's just unbelievable explosion off the line, the best get off in the draft class. And you could even make the argument that he could be a better pass rusher than all these guys out here, and including Kavalon Thibodeau, which that's a tough one. I think Kavalon Thibodeau is a freaking animal. But with that being said, Adam Anderson has top 10 potential in my view. Right now, he's more of a late first rounder, right? The currently, if he were to come out right now, just because the lack of reps. Because, like I said, 200 snaps, that's not really a whole ton to go eye. And you don't know how he's going to look in the run game. So we need to see him build up that frame. At 6'3", 238, he's more of really a linebacker at that size. He needs to bulk up. If he can get to 250, man, at 6'3", and add some muscle there and keep that burst, man, his pass rush tools are nuts. And this guy could easily be the next, like, Vaughn Miller level of play. Like, I really believe that. I really think he has the tools. And if you compare him to Aziz Ojalari, which I thought Aziz was a decent player. I think he's been a little little overhyped. I, you know, I'm happy where he went in the second round. I felt like that was a really good value for him. And he's a good player in a 3-4 outside linebacker role. But this guy, man, was 20 times more explosive getting off the edge. I like him better as a pass rusher. This dude is just an animal. And I think he has top 10 potential here. On to number three, it's ZTF, Zion Tupola Fatui. And yeah, I don't know if I pronounced that name right. It's uh, still a tough one I'm trying to learn right now. But with that being said, we'll just call him ZTF as they kind of formally known here with it just, you know, it's a tough one. That being said, the Washington dude who came off the Achilles tear looked like an absolute animal in limited play. We'll only have like three, four games out on tape, but he made the most of them. He had seven sacks, seven tackles for a loss in those games. He was averaging two sacks. He even had one taken away from him off of a BS like personal foul call. Like he grabbed him around the neck and they'll like, throw the flag. I don't know. They get a little bit. That's a little another rant on uh, the referees. But with that being said, going back to ZTF, this dude has a combination of size at 280 pounds. This dude's an animal and he has the, you know, a decent amount of bend, as we were saying, for his size. Uh, and, you know, you would think he's an inside player, right? No, this dude, in my opinion, is an outside edge rusher at the weight. I would almost recommend him even considering losing a little bit of weight and just adding on some bulk and, you know, adding on some muscle there to his frame uh, instead. Like, he could legitimately be a, another one of these guys that... 
I could see him playing multiple roles in the NFL. Very versatile player, but you look at what he can do with the power too that he has in his hands, like really strong hands and good at leveraging though his hands and getting them into your, you know, your hip pocket and everything like that and pushing you back. But man, this guy, if he can come back here and show a full season uh, under his belt, man, this Duke guy could easily be, uh, you know, a, a top 15 pick here. So I like him a lot. ZTF, watch out for this man here at Washington in this defense could be the next great defensive event. On to number four now, and it's going to be, oh, he's looking a little bit surprised. Look at it. He's like, oh, you're going crazy out here. What is being said? Kingsley Engbear from South Carolina. I really do like this guy in terms of his tenacity, his grit, that everything he comes out. He comes out with aggression, man. This guy is so aggressive out here. He's looking to bully people. He's looking to come after you. His motor is hot. And I speaking of hot, like this dude, every play, the effort is there. Something you can't say about someone like Drake Jackson or someone like that, maybe where the effort's a little bit lacking. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see about that, but we'll talk about him in a little bit. Going back to Kingsley Engbear, this dude's motor is hot. He's running hot. The problem with him, he doesn't have a pass rush plan and he does not have the pass rush uh, tools just yet to win like he's just not a consistent pass rusher and also if you look on the tape it's just you know again there's not a whole ton of, he's not really that down to down disruptor he not, at least not yet he can get there though he has all the tools all the athletic ability you look for at six foot four, 260. He's got the NFL size, NFL build. He can play inside. He played a lot of inside too in South Carolina. So he's got versatility there. Can play in a Danico Autry role. Can play a lot of different roles here on a defense. I really do like his upside and what he brings. But right now, I'm, I'm grading him as a late first rounder. Even you could even, based on the tape this year, you could even say a second rounder is really, I think, what you would be looking at. But this dude has all the tools as well to be a first rounder. We'll see if he can get there this year. Got to put it together and get some production going. But man, this dude is a monster. On to number five, where we're ready to thrive with George Karloftis from Purdue, hometown here. And I am super excited to go over George Karloftis who also has a really cool name, Carl Loftus. Say that 10 times fast. You can't. I can't even say 10 times fast very well. But George Carl Loftus is an animal there as more of a, not really an edge player, I guess. He's more of a 3-4 defensive end, at least at the next level. That's kind of what I see him at. A 6'4", 275 pounds. This dude has got that power you look for in I mean, he can bully people there, uh, which is, is always a little concerning at the college level. But this dude within his own right is a young dude. And coming out of his freshman year, I mean, he was built like an, you know, an NFL player in his freshman season. So George Karloftis is one of those guys that I think he's going to be, his power is going to go to the next level and he's going to be able to use that and it's not just a thing where he's he's bigger than everybody else so he's going to be able to you know bully these college players I actually like his power and his pass rush moves he impressed me a lot more as a pass rusher than he did a run defender and I thought he was pretty dang good from the edge even so you know he's the type of guy who absolutely has versatility can play a little bit of anywhere uh, whether it's on the inside or on the edge and maybe like a JJ Watt level role I'm not making a comparison there but making in terms of a role comparison and then finally Finally, uh, with him, uh, one thing I do think is something, you know, again, he's not a super athlete or nothing like that. That's why I was kind of saying I think he's going to be more of a 3-4 end rather than like a, a, a pass rusher, a 4-3. He could be a base 4-3 end. You could definitely see that, especially on a strong side or something like that. Uh, but we'll see about George Karloftis. Really, really solid player. One of those guys where I just feel he's a really good player. Like, I don't know if he's ever going to be elite or nothing like that, but I just think he's a really solid player. Doesn't have the uh, athletic or, uh, upside, or I would say, of some of these other guys we'll talk about and some of the guys we've already talked about. But in terms of just being a solid player, George Karloftis fits the bill. If you're looking for a really, really good base 3-4 end, that's George Karloftis. This Purdue boiler up on to number six now, and it's Maja Sanders from Cincinnati, the Bearcats. And this dude has the athletic profile and has the upside here. Um, and you know, yeah, you could go back to the competition and say, well, you know, the competition he went up against. I mean, really, not a whole ton of. He went up against Georgia there in that bowl game. You in Houston. You know, it's not the greatest conference, of course. But with that being said, going back to the player and just what you have on film, because that's what you're judging it off of. This dude has some power to his game. And, 
you know, he's got a good size to it, six foot five, two fifty five again, and he can build his frame even more. He's got room to grow, but really, really long arms. I mean, you can even look at. I mean, you can tell he's got pretty long arms there, and he utilizes them pretty well. I think he could utilize them a little bit better, but I think he's able. You know, when he does utilize them and get his hands, you know, get his hands on the, the offensive linemen and everything like that, he's able to push people back with his power that he does have, and he does have good enough bend too to get around the edge. Good speed. Good hustle, good motor. This guy could easily be a first rounder if he can, you know, again, prove it and put more production on tape this year. Definitely an every down player too. Good in the run game. I mean, he's, he's faced a lot of three-man fronts there with the Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati defense. Uh, he was able to hold his own there in those three-man fronts. So I really do like Maje Sanders. We'll just have to wait and see. Going on now. To number seven, and it's Nick Bonito. And you're like, ooh, Nick Bonito. I know he's getting a lot of hype. I'm a little lower on Nick Bonito. I think he's kind of like my Aziz Ojolari of this year. And that's not discredit to Nick Bonito. I think he's a good player and everything like that. But we're holding back. Holding back just a little bit. And Nick Bonito is kind of like... He's a good speed rusher, and I just don't know if that wins at the next level consistently. I think he's a really good 3-4 outside linebacker. I think he can drop back into coverage and have a nice role there. But at the same time, I just don't think he has enough power, at least right now. He needs to bulk up, put a little bit more muscle on there on that frame, which he can grow into for sure. He definitely has some ability to grow into that frame. But with that being said, a little bit lower on Nick Bonito. I think just got to put on, you know, again, we need to see a little more power, a little bit more... Uh, you know, more, uh, you know, more hand usage in his game. If he can do that, I think he'll be a little bit better. But ultimately, he's got great bend, great speed, uh, his athletic ability. He's a great finesse player. If you're looking for that three, four outside linebacker, look no further. Nick Benito is a deep man. On to number eight now, and it's Drake Jackson. And this is another one I'm lower on right now. And this dude has, he's another one It's just like, I'm frustrated. I'm sitting here watching the tape. I'm watching these games. And I'm just, I literally went back and did a double take on these guys. And Drake Jackson was one of those guys I had to go back. And I, hey, if you can, go and watch the three games that he has on YouTube of the Arizona, Arizona State, and then also the UCLA game. And I kept doing double takes. I watched these these games twice because I, I kept saying, I kept trying to buy into Drake Jackson because all the hype, but I couldn't do it because you look on tape and yes, he has all the athletic tools. He's got the frame, he's got the size, the speed, the athletic ability, the twitch even, like he can move really well at his size. But the problem is the production, he's not a down-to-down -down player. He's not getting, he's not wrecking any havoc. Like he's getting bullied by tight ends even at time. Um, I, I don't know. He's not really good in the run game. He doesn't have the pass rush tools. He doesn't have any sort of plan when he is pass rushing. And that's why I'm lower on Drake Jackson right now. But he is got so much upside, and that's why I still think he's a round two player with if he can put it together this year, yes, I see him being a round uh, first round player, but He's got a way to go here, and we really need to see that potential if we want to get him into that first round. But, man, I was one of those guys I'm just looking at and saying, oh, how has he not got it yet? I don't know. It's one of those things, but he is so, so close. Such a good player here. We'll see if he can put it together and really live up to that potential. On to number nine, where we got Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan, the Wolverine. And speaking of the Wolverine, we got, uh, we, you know, this dude, I'm telling you, he is a Wolverine in the run game, dude. He's pulling out the big claws out here. He's got Hugh Jackson on his on his, his side because he is a great run defender. I mean, that if you're looking for a legit run defender, base fourth or 3-4 end is what I see him at the next level. He is just that man. He is a machine. And Michigan does a great job, it seems like, of teaching these guys run defense too. But I see him as a late day two guy. Uh, doesn't really, he's not going to really add a whole ton in the pass rush game. Now he is a decent pass rusher. That's not to say he can't pass rush and he's not going to be able to provide a level of pass rush. But he just isn't quite there yet in terms of putting his pass rush tools together and in sync. I think that's something we want to see from Aiden Hutchinson this year. But in terms of a run defender, he is that dude. He can be out there on all three downs. Really solid defensive end. Another one of those guys I just feel really confident about being a really solid player at the next level. On to number 10. And this guy's more of a projection for me because of the lack of tape that you can find on YouTube right now. But Will McDonald watched him. I remember the Oklahoma game and I was trying to just remember it from what I went off of in that game and I was able to go back and watch a little bit of that and whatnot. But going 
going on to Will McDonald, who he has that first step explosive, not, uh, you know, uh, Adam Anderson level of explosiveness, but pretty dang good, man. He's got good get off and a good bend for his size and everything like that. Six foot four, needs to put on a little bit more bulk. Definitely think that's going to be something we need to see. But he also has really good production, was their best player on that defensive line for sure. Uh, I mean, they got some decent guys there at Iowa State. It's a decent, it's a talented team, but this dude on his own right, just one of those guys to keep an eye out on. As I was saying, I didn't see a whole ton of games from him just because they don't have a whole ton of out there of the Iowa State defense. With that being said, though, definitely a guy to keep an eye out on. He had like a, what, a 13 plus uh, tackle for loss and also like 10 sacks this past season. And it showed when I was watching the Oklahoma game, this dude is a disruptor and can get after the quarterback. Just need to see more of him. On to number 11 now. This is another guy where we need to see production. It's Xavier Thomas of Clemson. Hasn't been able to put together, put it together. I, there's, I've heard some ego things with him. You know, he had to kind of come back down to earth. He had injury issues this year too. I believe he's going to miss part of the season with a toe injury. Don't I, I think something like that or whatever's going on there. But in terms of the tools, the athletic ability, this dude is an athletic raw dude. Like if he can just kind of, he needs some better, uh, you know, maybe coaching. I mean, he's got good coaching. It's just. I don't know. He needs to get it. He needs to get to the, get to, you know, something like that. I don't know. There's something there. He just hasn't reached his potential yet, but he does have a lot of potential. And if he can get there, he definitely can creep up and move up into the second, first round, even conversation. We'll have to wait and see. But a long way from there, we got to see more production and him actually put it together for a season. On to number 12. And this is another one of those guys that I limited tape on but I really liked what I saw when I did see his tape and that's Amari Bono from Virginia Tech and this dude has unbelievable burst unbelievable athletic ability at his size 6'6 235 which is a really really interesting size there but with that being said he has so much ability to put on some bulk on that frame if he can do that and, and keep that bend and keep that speed which he has unbelievable explosion I'm telling you go and turn on the tape he was a converted linebacker which makes sense at his size and speed and whatnot. But he is just unbelievable in terms of that. For You just don't see it. He's more athletic than some of these other guys, a lot of these other guys that you see out here on this list. But he just, can he put it together? Can we watch more tape too? We need more tape on him, uh, more snaps and things like that. But he is a guy to really keep a close eye on this year because he could shoot up draft boards really, really easily. Like him a lot. On to number 13, and Zach Harrison. This is one of those guys, it just kind of, you know, it was okay. I thought he was decent. Um, nothing crazy. Again, he doesn't have the twitch, in my opinion, to be, you know, the next Nick Bosa or Joey Bosa, you know, trying to make the Ohio State, care, uh, Ohio State, Ohio State comparisons. Uh, Chase Young, he's not that guy or nothing like that, but he's good. You know, again, got the long frame. He's got the super long arms and everything. He can, you know, bull rush you, get your hand in you. He does all that really, really well, but that's really one he's going to have to win at the next level. He's just not, doesn't have really the twitch, doesn't have the, you know, uh, the bend or anything like that to be that guy. But if you're looking for a power rusher, base 4 3 end, six foot six, 265 pounds, he's a really, really solid player. But right now, third, fourth round for me is kind of where I'm at with Zach Harrison. I do think he's better than Tyreek Smith, who we don't have on this list right now. Watched him, just wasn't overly impressed. I think he's kind of in the, the same realm with his teammate of last year who was drafted with Jonathan Cooper, uh, in like what, the fifth round or something. That's kind of where I'm at with him. Uh, with that being said, I think Zach Harrison is a little bit better, so I'm having him over in that fourth round. On to our final player right now, it's Brenton Cox, and this is a guy that just continues to frustrate me as well because, uh, you know, there's just... There's been off the field things, obviously dismissed from Georgia. You have um, injury issues, of course. So we're just, we want to see him put it together because he does have the ability. Now, he's not a super athlete or anything like that. And, uh, you know, as we're saying, the injuries, I think the consistency is a little bit lacking. Uh, and I think that could be just more of a mental thing. But he has a lot of ability, like in terms of his IQ and understanding and read and reaction. Like he has it. Like he has it that some of these other guys like Drake Jackson just don't have that IQ yet at least that understanding of the game. I feel like Brenton Cox has that. Like he understands football at a high level and he processes information. He doesn't get fooled on RPOs very often. 
Um, so I don't know. I love that part of his game, and he definitely is a three-down player. He's just steady, rock-solid in terms of pass rush. He can provide a good uh, ability to get after the passer. There's multiple times he's able to get after the passer throughout the game. He's not just a fourth-quarter guy or nothing like that. He can get after the passer throughout the game, and he also is really, really good in run defense at getting off blocks and block shedding. It's just a matter of putting together consistency and you know dealing with whatever's going on. So definitely a guy to keep a close eye out on because I think he could rise up boards a lot if he can put it together here. But again, that's a big question mark right now for me, Brenton Cox. Uh, right now, though, if he were able to put it together, I would definitely put him more in the top 10 range. With that being said, that is going to be my 2022, early 2022 edge rankings, preseason edge rushing rankings. Let me know what you think. Who do you have? Again, there's still some guys I haven't watched yet, like Isaiah Thomas from Oklahoma. Uh, still plenty of guys out there We need to, I need to go over, and we'll go and do that as the season progresses. With that being said, my name is G Sling. I'm doing my thing. Stay crazy out there. That's what we're trying to do, and I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you later.